Okay, uh, could you introduce yourself in, to the viewing audience, please? Okay, I'm uh, Veronique Lamb. Okay, and um, explain a little bit about why you're here today and what the issue is. Okay, I'm here today because I want to stand against the trophy hunting and the can hunting. It is a horrible business. I don't think that this kind of business should, should still have its place in the time of today. Maybe 100 years ago, 50 years ago, the people were not realizing, but today this is just scandalous. It's been six weeks since Dr. Walter Palmer walked through the doors of his dental practice, but this morning he walked in to see this. Protesters holding signs, chanting about his extradition, police on the premises, making sure he is safe, and Dr. Walter Palmer himself hoping to get back to his normal life. You know, this has been um, caught the world's attention. Um, why are you here and, and what are your thoughts about everything that took place to this point? Well, I think it's it just symbolizes uh, people's upset and anger regarding trophy hunting, which is the, the killing of the strongest and biggest animals uh, that should be allowed to live because they're the ones that, that pass on the good gene pool. Um, just to put their heads on your wall. And Cecil, being that he is kind of a known lion, I think just kind of uh, oh, it stole the hearts of the people that are animal lovers mm -hmm. and want to see trophy hunting stopped. Also, Dr. Palmer, if you go to his website, Dr. Walter Palmer, kind of speaks to his character. Um, there are hundreds of reviews about him in his dental practice, which really talks about his character, which uh, kind of says it all. You know, today, um, you know, it's amazing in the media, it doesn't take that many people to bring an issue to the national or international consciousness for that matter. Um, why are you here today, and, and, and really, what is, what is the message that you're trying to send? Well, I was hoping that there would be a good media presence here again today like there was two months ago. Uh, my message is uh, I personally am very anti-trophy hunting, and I think that that movement has uh, got a lot of steam out of this issue. Uh, the killing of Cecil itself and, and everything that was done, is I'm totally against that, but just the overall trophy hunting issue is, is my cause. Mm -hmm. And whether, whether it be lions or leopards or, or whatever. What would you say legally, I guess something, uh, you know, there's nothing legally that's going to happen, um, at least stated to this point, to Dr. Palmer. Um, what, what do you think your efforts here today um, exactly are designed to do um, in absence of any legal decisions? Uh, I think it probably will just make an awareness of the, the horrors of trophy hunting and already uh, some of the airlines have, have uh, quit transferring transporting um, trophies from Zimbabwe to here 
uh, which is a big step legally. If you can't do it, then people aren't going to go trophy hunt if they can't get their dead animals over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that's a big step. In terms of, of Dr. Palmer, I hope he just, in his conscience, can, can see how wrong trophy hunting is. I don't know legally, really, because it, since it is legal to trophy hunt, I don't think there's anything really that can be done, and I can't see that he's going to be extradited uh, to Zimbabwe. You know, in the absence of any kind of legal issues that are pending, um, it seems like there's not going to be anything legally that happens. When you have these kind of concerns, um, how do you sustain um, your perspectives in the absence of even media for that matter? Well, I wrestle with this all the time at night. I, I, this morning I got up and put these thoughts down on paper. What would I like to say to Palmer if I were given an audience with him, which I didn't think I would. Uh, and I thought it, he would at least maybe take my letter, but he didn't. Uh, well, I, 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 I just come out here to, to meet people like yourself who will help me get my message out that uh, trophy hunting is uh, legal or illegal. It's, it's, I consider it immoral. Legally, um, you know, do you think there should be laws that um, are criminal around this in, in the United States or in other countries? Or or what do you think exactly should happen with your with your protest here today? I really hope from the bottom of my heart that we are going to ban this business. That it's going to be something that won't exist anymore. Ban the can and trophy hunting. Point. Okay. It's don't go in beautiful Africa to kill all the wildlife over there it's 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 not worth it it's not don't do that it should be something that don't exist anymore no trophy hunting this is something that belonged to the past right. not from the days today uh, because i've been just drilled by TV hosts over the past week. I can well, imagine. How dare you say that, uh, you know, it's not the law of the land, because that's their phrase. It's the law of the land. Michael, Dred Scott decision of 1857 still remains to this day the law of the land, which says that black people aren't fully human. Now, in the United States, this issue uh, actually has been very controversial in, in different communities. Um, a, a lot of people, as, as you know, you know, sometimes issues are split in the black community as far as their perspective on issues and, and the white community and other communities. Sometimes there's agreement on issues and sometimes there's disagreement. Um, what would you say to uh, some of the voices that have been kind of around this issue that the public education system in America has almost produced um, human beings headed for an animal reality. Um, when you talk about the prison industry, uh, when you talk about human lives that are in jail, um, more specifically black youth, um, where does this issue line up with that concern in our higher humanity? Okay. Uh, you know, we, we cannot, we can, I, I think that we cannot take as a, for, for example, for me, I cannot take care of everything, right. you know, some people going to take care about the kids, some people going to take care about animals, some kids, some people going to take care about the people in jail. So we, we all have, we, we all need to have something we care for. You do that, I do that. And so... Hopefully one day everything gonna be covered. Mm -hmm. You do that, I do that, and that's it. Okay, do you, do you see there being solidarity with those similar issues when we're talking about humankind or the way uh, humankind has its relationship to the animal kingdom? I think that, if I, I, no, I, I, I'm deeply convinced about that. If you don't like animals, you cannot like humans. If you're mean to animals, you're going to be mean to human. 
you don't have two hearts. You don't have one heart for the animals and one heart for the human. It's one heart. And from this heart, it's love. Love for the human, for the animals, for the nature. Mm. That's my point of view. What is the intersection between animal rights or those who come out and raise the issues around one like this and, and human rights? What are, what are the core values that intersect between those two things? Well, animals are widely, you know, they're uh, uh, God's creatures and they are protected widely all over the world by, by man's laws. Cecil was protected. There are areas where they are not protected, and where they're not protected, then they are uh, subject to uh, people like uh, Dr. Palmer who go out and take advantage of the areas where the protection doesn't, doesn't exist. Thankfully, more and more areas are being generated to protect the remaining 20,000 lions. Palmer saw fit to it that, to try and get around those, those laws. How do, you know, I talked to somebody else out here, how do, how, what is the connection between animal rights and human rights and those who kind of uh, participate in raising the issues to a higher level consciousness across the country and uh, internationally for that matter, how do they connect? Is there equal value systems? I think, yeah, I definitely think they care. I think that uh, the rights of living beings is at the, at the key. Many times, I've been in animal rights for a long time, People will say, well, don't you care about the kids or don't you care about hunger? Most people, if you asked people here if they care about all those issues, they would certainly support all the, the issues in terms of homelessness and, you know, and human rights throughout the country. Um, but this just happens to be where, where we are right now. I had no idea um, about the Dred Scott Park that we're literally maybe about a block away from. Um, do you think there's any kind of symbolism, that's irony of symbolism, that we're a block away from a park named after Dred Scott who was, you know, a human being that was um, trying to seek his freedom as the Cecil the Lion was sure, you know, being free in the in the wild of the nature of Africa, do you, do you oh, see any connection to those issues? I I, I absolutely no. I, I that's a really interesting connection. Um, the reason everybody's here is because this is where his clinic is. But I, there's who knows? Yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, thought. Look at the prisons. Do you know why the prisons are full of what they're full of? Because of people like him without a conscience. And you obviously don't have one either if you can stand there and defend him. Find another post. Do yourself a favor. Be a man. Yeah. Take a good, long, hard look in the mirror and ask yourself who you are. Your planet destroyers. We're supporting the destruction of the planet. We have four rhinos left in Africa that are guarded by real men 24-7, so people like your boss don't kill them. Four of them left. 
anti-poaching police sleep with those rhinos. So people like Walter Palmer don't kill the last of them because he wouldn't care if he took the last rhino. And you people stand there and guard him. Where's your conscience? Where are your morals? What's wrong with you? Did you ever ask somebody why he was even allowed to carry firearms? He was committed, he was, um, he had a, a felony. An open letter to Walter Palmer and friends of Cecil. There are no strangers in the world, only friends we haven't met yet. As an avid amateur photographer, I travel the world over, living by that phrase, meeting wonderful people of all kinds, and animals too. I have traveled to Africa over a dozen times and have done over 300 safaris in 10 countries there, taking over 20,000 photos of lions in the past five years. I have visited Zimbabwe several times and met Cecil for the first time in 2011. I was 20 feet from him, he looked me right in the eye. We had that special moment of eye contact and acknowledging each other's presence and our respective right to be there. Excuse me. It's, it's a feeling that's hard to describe. Uh, this really gets me choked up, I'm sorry. In July 2015, Walter Palmer murdered my friend Cecil for reasons I have yet to understand. Palmer's statements to date have been a sham, and his reasoning nothing more than a hollow attempt to deflect blame. It's not unusual for lions to have a name. Many of the lions living in or near areas used for safari have names, and they have families, young ones and mates that depend on them. The fact that Cecil was collared is immaterial. It's like killing a homeless person and claiming it doesn't matter because he wasn't a big shot. Killing Cecil in the name of conservancy is also a joke. Palmer's statement that he relied on his guides to see to it that all was done legally is also a joke. You do not spend $50,000, travel halfway around the world, and participate in something with such profound potential consequences without doing your due diligence, unless you're stupid or just don't care. Reports about the circumstances indicate Cecil was lured or baited out of his safe refuge to be slaughtered in an area where murdering animals is legal. It's also been reported that Cecil was killed at night why, if not to escape detection? You do not have to hunt lions in Africa. Although they do move around, their whereabouts is generally well known and they do not run from man as most have been habituated over the past 25 years. If you didn't care about losing an arm or your life, you could literally go out, find one, and grab them by the tail. Let's just hope Palmer is ultimately held to account for what he did to my friend Cecil. I have some thoughts on this subject and would welcome a talk with Palmer to discuss just what it would take to try to make all this right with the world and would welcome the opportunity to sit down with him and discuss the issues. To start with, there will be a two-day exhibition of my photography in November at the Woodbury Community Arts Feature, excuse me, Woodbury Community Arts Center featuring African wildlife. A huge framed print of Cecil, uh, the same as the picture seen on TV, will be sold by silent auction with proceeds going to nonprofit organizations. A $50,000 bid from Palmer would buy untold media attention. Signed, Paul C. Runzi. And uh, many of the shots and still video or, and video used around the world regarding this issue, I shot in Zimbabwe on my first encounter with Cecil. And one last comment, just 20,000 African lions survived today, down from a population of about a half a million in the middle of the 20th century. Killing a single lion in 2015 is mathematically equivalent to murdering 400,000 people of today's roughly 8 billion people. And because Cecil's six cubs will likely be killed by the next male to take over the pride, Palmer's wayward arrow and the days later, days later mercy shot may be as devastating to the lion population as the death of 3 million people would be to humanity. Now, one caveat here, since this was written, I didn't write the last paragraph, but since that was written, uh, Cecil's pride was taken over by his brother, Jericho, and it looks like the cubs of the pride probably will not die now like they were feared that they would originally.
and I'm not familiar with the area, but uh, we were doing some scouting of the area, and interesting enough, uh, exactly a block away from here, um, toward this direction, there is a park um, named after Dred Scott, uh, Dred Scott Park, and it's a playground, multi-playgrounds, baseball diamonds, and things of that, of that nature. Do you see any kind of issue or irony that um, we're literally blocks away from a memorial to Dred Scott and this incident here with the doctor who traveled to Africa and and um, violently killed uh, you know one of God's creatures for that matter mm -hmm. for a trophy? Well, I must plead ignorance. I, I surely have heard of Dred Scott over the years. You'd have to fill me in on exactly the all the uh, details of that of that. Uh Law or oh, it's like the, the Dred Scott decision, the su Supreme Court, where he was a slave who uh, uh, petitioned to the United States government mm -hmm. um, for his human rights. Okay. Uh, and because of the Dred Scott decision, the su Supreme Court ruled that black people were not um, viewed as human beings. Right, force. okay. Well, that's obviously a very far reaching uh, statement. Uh, that's, that's a good case in point, though, where man has not always viewed even man as having rights. Uh, in modern times, the Aborigines in Australia were legally considered animals mm -hmm. until, I can't tell you what year, but far later than the Dred Scott uh, uh, opinion. The Dred Scott decision of 1857 still remains to this day the law of the land, which says that black people aren't fully human. So. Uh, where where these rights stop when when you stop talking about and people and, and then start talking about animals that's a pretty fine line I just came back from two weeks in Uganda where I was trekking gorillas and chimpanzees which share 97 percent of our DNA and when you spend two weeks with those creatures and realize that they are so much like us and that the three percent difference I'm not sure what the three percent is because they have intelligence they have dexterity uh, the 3%, I don't know what it is. Uh, where does the line, where do you draw the line? If a lion, for instance, isn't, doesn't share the DNA with us, how about a gorilla and a chimp? 97% shared DNA. And I look into the eyes of a gorilla and a chimp, and you know what I see? I see somebody who's looking at me and wondering what I'm thinking, and I'm looking at him and wondering what he's thinking. And I tell people, you know, the only difference between gorillas and humans, gorillas are nicer. I'm Veronique Lamp. I am from Belgium and I'm watching Free Radio.